This is my neighbor Al. Boy, he's up early this morning. This guy has the dedication of a, a New England lobster man. I'm down Easter. He never misses a day. He missed a couple of days last week because he was intimidated by my camera. He's not anymore. He knows I'm recording him every morning, but he continues uh, to scrub the lake of golf balls, what we call producing, harvesting. This lake has produced for this man probably three or 4,000 golf balls in the last three years. I don't know what he does with them all, but he's up bright and early every morning. And since I've been recording him for about 10 days now, uh, I'm up every morning recording him. If he can be up to, to scrub the lake of golf balls, I can be up to take videos of it, okay? Uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, this doesn't happen year-round. When he leaves, this little routine, this little entitlement, this little uh, whatever he's doing uh, ends, all right? He sticks out like a turd in a punch bowl, all right? Uh, to see somebody that obvious that they mu that lake has to produce for him. And he feels he's he has the perfect right to take 25 to 30 balls out of that lake a day. See? And he has a technique. This guy has got a three-year technique. He's been doing this for three years. Every move he does is a practice move that's been developed over three years of every morning getting up at the crack of dawn. He usually doesn't get up this early, but since I've been recording him, he thinks he can get away with it, and he isn't. So I'm going to be sitting here, and what I'm doing is I'm practicing my uh, photography techniques. Uh, my cinematography, my camera techniques, following him, trying to keep him in focus. It's not easy. But he really likes it. See... Yesterday he started in again. Yesterday he had three days off or two days off. But yesterday the lake was low. Like it is today. And when the lake is low, what a bonus that is for him. Because now he can get out farther and farther into the lake to harvest balls. I don't know what he does with all these balls. He's got a Cadillac sticking in his garage. Must be the payments are pretty high. That he has to come up with golf balls like this. About every fifth player or every fourth player that hits the tee box, yeah, any tee box on the sixth hole near the lake, uh, hits more than one ball. If you have 200 players go through the sixth hole a day, there's going to be 300 balls hit on the sixth hole. It's a mathematical cer certainty on this golf course. If you notice, a couple of days ago when I shot this, uh, he had to stand up on the bank because the, the water was all the way up to the bank. He had to reach in from the grass on the bank. Oh, uh, This is his justification. Is this the agreement you have with him, Andy? Because... If you've got this agreement where he uh, picks up the litter in the lake, can I have his job when he leaves in May? All right. I'll do that every day of the summer if you want. I'll pick up trash for you. If you let me have all the golf balls in the lake. I'm having trouble staking focused on a guy because it's so light, early in the morning we don't have a lot of light. The more light you have, the more easier it is to focus. Oh, boy, you hit a jackpot there. There's a mother load. But getting back to the story, when I first got here, I saw the opportunity that this man sees, a lake full of balls, so I head down to the lake with my telescopic, like this man did, and if I pan up right there, 
used to be the sales office with big picture windows facing the lake in my house. So, the day that I did what he's doing, I walked down to the lake and started doing exactly what this man is doing right here. The sales office called up the pro shop. Within five minutes, there was somebody from the pro shop out there from ground maintenance who uh, more or less put me in my place. Very emphatically, very uh, in my face, uh, don't, don't you walk on here. There's a bladder under here. We don't want anybody walking under here. And you're not to harvest golf balls out of the lake. And then years later, when I got into all this uh, discourse about track day, is track day an access easement? Uh, or not. And at first, Pat Pence Young told me there are absolutely no access easements on the golf course from any parcel. And that the golf course is private. A privately run, privately owned golf course that any, any time that somebody walks on this golf course, it's trespassed. So what is this guy doing right now? Is he trespassing? Is he borrowing? My father was an old guy, uh, old, much older than a father should be with a son like me. Uh, he was old enough to be my grandfather. Uh, and uh, what, He would never say steal. He would never say steal. It was always borrow. We're going to borrow this. Or they borrowed it. They didn't steal it, they borrowed it. So what's this guy doing? Is he borrowing these golf balls? Or is he keeping them for himself? Is this lake his own little golf ball production company? That if he gets up early enough with enough dedication, he can take golf balls by the ton out of here in the spring to take back to Wisconsin? Uh, I just, well, I want to tell you another little story that goes along with this story with the uh, rev reverence for golf balls. I'm a range hound, which means that I don't have a natural eye to hit a ball. I never did. If I don't spend four or five days on the range hitting 100 balls a day, I can't even play bogey golf. I can't even shoot in the 90s unless I go to the range all the time. And it's been that way for the last 40 years since I've been playing golf. Over 40 years, uh, if I know I'm going to be playing over the weekend, I spend three days at the range getting ready. Because I just don't have the natural striking ability of a ball. Well, anyway, so I've been on ranges in Japan, on a marine base in Japan, in Iwakuni. I uh, used to California, New York, wherever, South Carolina, wherever I lived, Seattle, uh, wherever I played golf, I spent more time on the range than I did on the course. And I never saw something on a range. It's something like that equates to what I'm watching here with this guy. Uh, his obsession with these balls every morning, you know. Uh, the golfers that play here to pay a, uh, for a round of golf, they never get a chance to recover a ball out of this lake. A lot of them, they hit the ball. They hit it down the lake. They grab their wand. They'll walk along the lake hoping maybe they'll find a ball. They don't find one. It's been scrubbed, Cloroxed. But Well, getting back to the golf ball story, uh, I, when I first got here, and I've seen it several times, there was a guy that lived across the lake over there named Martin, and he had a part-time job working for Martin had a part-time job working for because if all you got to do, if all you do is pick up cigarette butts for the uh, golf course, if that's all you do, or wash carts, or whatever, as long as you're under their employee, you get free golf, so Martin, but I, I, I was amazed, here I've been hanging out on uh, uh, driving ranges all of my life, all my life I've been hanging out on driving ranges, like a range hound, 
and I never saw on any driving range what I saw on this driving range within the first week of being here. Within the first week of being here, <coughs> I saw on a driving range that whenever anybody would buy a bucket of balls, and they would leave the balls, and they'd only hit half a bucket, and they'd leave a half a bucket on the range. Uh, it's the only place I ever saw in my life. Martin would run down as soon as he saw that person leave that half a bucket of balls on the range. A bucket of balls that have been paid for. They've been paid for. If the guy chose to leave them for somebody else to hit, that was his decision. But he left them on the range. I would see Martin or another employee run down to the range. As soon as they saw that person leave the range, they'd run down, gather up all the balls in a bucket, and put them back in the hopper. There's the golf ball story for you. Uh, I never saw that or anything like that in my life. Of all the ranges I've ever been on in my life, I used to hang around up in California. There was this coolest guy that ran a range up in, outside of Pleasant in Livermore, California, right on the highway. You never saw that happen. If somebody walked away from a half a, half a bucket of balls, they were left there for the next guy. All right? Uh, and the same thing now with, with this. When I saw that happen the first week I was here, I go, man, this, these people are serious about profit here. They're serious about uh, making a go of it. I mean, they're not even going to leave a spare ball. They're not going to leave a ball out on the driving range without going out and harvesting it and putting it back in the hopper so they can sell it twice. Uh, that's the same thing that's going on with this moron here every morning. For some reason, he feels he's entitled to walk out and cleanse this lake of golf balls every morning. Uh, that's why I'm here, okay? Call it a, a reporting. Uh, but, as I said yesterday, I'm on my patio. I'm not trespassing onto private property or onto the golf course. And there's a question now, are those his golf balls or are they the golf course's golf balls? Because if they're the golf course's golf balls, uh, he's got them. He gets them every morning. Now, this video is being going to be put on YouTube. And, and uh, I hope a lot of people in the city government the HOA people, the board of directors, the management companies, AAM, uh, see what's going on out here, okay?